Hey everybody, Tactic Zombies here. I'm pretty sure you would have heard by now, but us Yakuza fans are eating really good this week because Sega has officially revealed the release date for Amazon Prime's Yakuza TV show titled Like a Dragon Yakuza. Some people were completely blindsided by this news, but not me, and hopefully not you either, because I actually talked about this show in my Wild World of Yakuza Adaptations video that I made a little while back. When I made that video a couple of months back, pretty much all the news that there was about the show at the time was that it existed, it was being made, it would be on Amazon Prime, and that it was going to adapt Yakuza Kiwami. And I personally expected no news to come out about it until, like, this fall, and I was expecting it to come out next year as something for the 20th anniversary of the series. So I was definitely caught off guard by just how soon news came about it, and such substantial news at that. So in this video, I pretty much want to summarize everything we know so far about the show, and also give my opinions about the show and potentially what it could turn into. As for who's working on the series, the director is Masaharu Take, whose most notable works seem to be 100 Yen Love, which is a boxing romance movie that has 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. So definitely worth checking out. I'm definitely going to be looking into seeing where I can watch it, because it looks pretty good. And then also the We Make Antiques series, which is a series of comedy films. A lot of the movies in his filmography are listed under the drama genre, which I think is a really good sign that he's well-versed in that, because, you know, obviously the Yakuza games have a ton of those dramatic elements in them that make it seem like a very dramatic kind of soap opera type story, just in video game form. And then there's also just the fact that a lot of his movies are boxing movies, which really piqued my interest personally because I love the Rocky movies. So I'm definitely going to go back and check out most of his filmography by the time the Yakuza show comes out. He's piqued my interest as a director, and although I have not seen any of his stuff yet, just as an outsider looking in, I think he looks like a really good fit for the Yakuza series. As for the leading man, you know, the star of the show, we've got Ryoma Takeuchi playing Kazuma Kiryu. He's appeared in a ton of Kamen Rider projects, which Kamen Rider is a franchise that I know little to nothing about, so I can't speak to the quality of any of those movies that he's been in, but the fact is he's been in a lot of them. That was a lot of his filmography when I was going through and trying to look at what he's been in. He's also been in quite a bit of drama movies, he's been in some high school romance movies, you know, the typical stuff you'd expect from a younger, handsome actor like himself. Takeuchi was actually in one of Masaharu Take's previous movies, 2014's In the Hero, although it appears that the role was very minor, as on Google, when you go to cast who was in In the Hero, and you scroll down to Ryoma Takeuchi, it doesn't even give a name for his character that he played, it just says he was in the movie. And although I personally haven't seen any of the stuff that Takeuchi has starred in, I don't really think he has the right build to play Kiryu. You know, he stands at six foot one, which I think might honestly give him an inch on Kiryu from the games. You know, he looks humongous at the press conference, at least in comparison to the director, Masaharu Take. Takeuchi also spoke quite a bit at the press conference about what it meant to play Kiryu, and how in character he got, and how at some points he was so in character that he almost lost himself in the role. He also spoke about just getting in shape to play Kiryu, which always impresses me when actors gain or lose weight to play a role, because I just can't imagine doing that, you know, it seems like an impossible task for me. Although I'm not very familiar with either Takeuchi or Take's prior works, what I've seen so far has me intrigued, and I'm hoping that when the show finally releases this fall, we're going to find out that they were great choices for star and director, respectively. And as for the actual contents of the series itself, there's a little bit that we know of so far, so let's get into it. At the time when I made the previous video covering this topic, basically the most I could dig up about the show was that it's going to be an adaptation of Yakuza Kiwami, and now with the new info we have, I've come to find out that that's only really half right. The show will actually reportedly be telling an original story that is simply based off the plot of that original Yakuza game from 2005. And to what extent changes are going to be made is still unclear at the moment, but we do know the basic premise of the show. The story is going to be told between 1995 and 2005, just like the original Yakuza game, it's going to mostly stick to Kamurocho as the city that it's set in, just like the original Yakuza game, and it's going to follow Kiryu and two friends, in air quotes. In 1995, Kiryu is supposed to be young and making mistakes, and it's these mistakes that will give him his 10 years in the joint, to which he'll be released in 2005 and will have to face the consequences of his actions, which sounds quite a bit like that plot of that original Yakuza game. They also want to put an emphasis on the difference between 1995 and 2005, which at this point, do I even need to keep saying it? That's basically everything that we know concrete at the moment, aside from, of course, the tattoo. The main promo picture that's being kind of circled around the internet right now shows Takeuchi's Kiryu with his back towards the camera with the iconic Dragon Irizumi on his back. The tattoo has a lot more red on it here than it does in the actual games, and I'm assuming that's just something weird with the color saturation or whatever for this actual promo picture. 
I'm assuming that when the show comes out or if a trailer drops or something like that, we're going to see that the coloration is more close to the actual tattoo from the game. Or, you know, this very well could just be a deliberate design change to maybe make it stand out a bit more from the actual game's tattoo. Maybe replacing a lot of the grays and the blacks of the tattoo with more red will make it pop better on video. Maybe it'll fit more with the color grading of the show. It's too soon to tell right now, but I think it looks really cool nonetheless. But there's one other main detail with the dragon tattoo that I noticed that this one I feel has to be intentional, and that's the fact that the dragon tattoo is missing its eyes. You know, the eyes aren't finished on this dragon tattoo. This actually gives me very big Yakuza 3 vibes, which if you know me, you know I love Yakuza 3, but it reminds me of Rikia with his Viper tattoo, where at the beginning of that game, the eyes on the Viper tattoo were unfinished. You know, they were just blank, because this tattoo artist passed away before he could finish the piece. But there's a whole sub-story, it was actually one of that game's biggest sub-stories, so they had full cutscenes and everything, but Ricky went and he sat down with Curious Tattoo Artist, and you know, a bunch of hoops he had to jump through, but he ended up getting his tattoo finished, and it was a very big moment for his character. So, I'm wondering if the show's gonna do something similar to that with Kiryu, which I'd be very interested to see. But I'm completely curious because in the actual games themselves, the only point in time where Kiryu had an unfinished tattoo was in Yakuza 0, where he just had the line work done. You know, by the time Yakuza Kiwami rolls around, which is a good seven years after Zero in the timeline and when it starts in 1995, his tattoo is done. So, like, I'm really curious as to how they're going to fit this kind of unfinished tattoo thing into the actual, you know, plot of the show, if they're going to make a big deal out of it or not. And you might think that I'm reading too deep into it, which maybe I am, but one of the pictures that I've seen floating around from the press conference, because I tried to look for an actual recording of it, but I couldn't find one anywhere on YouTube at least, it shows Takeuchi dotting the eyes of the dragon tattoo that they had printed out on the wall, which makes me feel like this is going to be a pretty substantial plot point in the actual series, you know? But I'm very curious as to what actual changes we'll be making to the plot of the show, though, because obviously with it being about Kiryu and two friends, I think it's pretty safe to assume that those two friends are going to be Nishiki and Yumi. Maybe not Yumi, but definitely Nishiki is going to be one of them. I'm very curious to see, though, what changes are actually made to the plot of the show, because even if this was a one-to-one -one retelling of the story of the game, which it isn't, changes would have to be made because this is only a six-episode show, so the runtime is going to be pretty limited. You could always spend more time in 1995, because in the original game, that was basically just the prologue, you know? Most of the story was set in 2005, and, you know, they might spend more time there to kind of get you more attached to the characters before Kiryu's... 10, 10 years, years in, the, in joint. the joint. They could also make the changes of cutting things for time, because, you know, if you only have six episodes to tell that story, you know, some things are going to get cut. You know, first thing that comes to mind that I think would probably be worth cutting, you know, not really worth cutting, but something I think you could cut and not really subtract too much would be Lao Ka Long and the Snake Flower Triad. You could remove that little chapter from the game and still have the story play out pretty much the same. They could also make changes for fan service reasons, which I am willing to bet money that they're going to give Majima a bigger role as a side character in this show than he ever had in the original Yakuza game. Not counting Kiwami, of course. Just because he's one of the most popular characters, if not the most popular character, so they'd be idiots not to have him in the show in some way, shape, or form. But I'm not at all opposed to them making changes just because they're changes. Because, you know, the show isn't going to retcon the games. The games will always exist as they are. But if this show can make changes and tell a good story of its own that's worth watching, I think that has even more value and worth as a piece of art than just a safe, by-the-numbers retelling of that first Yakuza game. Of course, the show is being produced for Amazon Prime, which that alone gives me a lot of hope, because Amazon Prime is a lot of great shows, but even just in terms of video game shows, there's the Fallout show, which was outstanding, at least what I've seen so far. I haven't finished it yet. But as a Fallout fan, I was really worried about that show, and they exceeded my expectations. So I'm really confident with how they're going to handle the Yakuza show. I'm way more confident with Amazon as an actual publisher, producer, or whatever, as opposed to another streaming service like, you know, Netflix, you know, Paramount+, Plus, people like that. And this brings me to the final main point of the video I want to discuss, is the future possibilities for this show. Obviously, if the first season is successful enough, there's a lot of room for them to take the show going forward, and there's really two ways they could do it. First of all, is if the show sticks more closely to the source material, they could just do every season being an adaptation of a different Yakuza game. Which I think would be excellent because, of course, the games are kind of like a soap opera already. I think Yakuza 0 would be excellent if they gave it this treatment because that games was already structured and laid out like a crime drama TV show. So I think it's a perfect fit to be made into a TV show for Amazon Prime. But the second option is if the actual story of the show diverts enough from the story of that first game, the seasons going forward could very well just be completely original stories, which I think would also be really cool 
and a really fun idea to explore. And the Yakuza show is way more likely to get more seasons on something like Amazon as opposed to a service like Netflix because look at how quickly Amazon likes to greenlight more of their shows, you know. Invincible came out and was big and they got two more seasons greenlit like immediately. Fallout show came out, was big, got a second season greenlit like a week after the show came out. So as that's opposed to like Netflix where a lot of Netflix's shows, I'd say probably like 70% of them, I'd have to guess, get canceled after their first season. The point I'm trying to get across is I feel like the show is in very good hands at Amazon Prime. But a lot of this is just speculation and what I think. But personally, I'm really excited for the show. I'm really looking forward to when it comes out, which it releases in two batches. The first batch will be releasing on October 25th of this year. The second batch will be dropping on November 1st of this year. So a couple month wait, but not too long of a wait. Honestly, again, I was expecting the show to drop maybe even next year at the earliest, but probably later than that is what I was expecting. But if you enjoyed the video and stuck around to the end, thank you. And if you're still interested in seeing the other times they made Yakuza into TV shows and movies, and even a stage play, then go check out my Wild World of Yakuza Adaptations video that I made a couple months ago. If you like this video, you're going to love that one. If you stuck around to the very end of the video, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I apologize for this being a bit of a shorter video, and also the fact that I didn't drop any video last week, but that's because I got all of my wisdom teeth out last week. So, no voiceover last week. I was not going to be in the mood for that. So, I just wanted to get something out, though, and especially with the surprise news of the show that came out two days ago, I believe, as of the time I'm recording. I am just really, really excited. This is came out of nowhere. I think it shocked everyone. And I just wanted to make something, though, for you guys and also for me. Just kind of get my thoughts out there about the show. I also apologize for not sticking to my normal upload schedule posting on Fridays, but I wanted to get this one out ASAP because, again, this came out of nowhere. So, But I'm back, though. Expect more videos on Fridays. And I'm also going to be start working on a bigger project video. It'll be something different. Whereas opposed to reviewing something from a video game, I'm going to be reviewing an entire TV show. So stay tuned for that. Probably won't be out for like a month, month and a half or whatever, but stay tuned. I'm really excited for this one, and if this video does well, if you guys like it, then maybe do more TV show content. Not sure. But again, this is just testing the waters right now. But I've been rambling for too long, though. So <clears throat> as always, this is Tactic Zombies. Peace out. God bless. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll catch you next time. Peace out. Yeah, cause I got it like that. Flow so smooth like I got it on tap. Yeah, and I'ma say it be a good night while I'm on my yingling, while I'm drinking Bud Light. Uh, can you get it when you miss me?